All right, what's up guys? So it's been a long time since I've done a, another contraption video and I have a few tech levels that have been out for a little while now. And some are more popular than others, but there's some interesting tech out of some of these last few levels that I had done a while ago uh, that I feel like I needed to share and I've been meaning to share. So since I've had a few requests and people do like these videos, I figured I'd do a little bit more of them. Um, so this is from Goombrat Carnival. So there's a few little setups in here that I want to just highlight. Not the whole thing, but there's certainly some things that I think make this even really cool. I mean, aesthetically, I love that it's red and yellow, but that's a whole other topic. Um, what I'm looking at right here is just another variation of a simple setup you've probably already seen and just a way of making it a little bit different. So in this uh, note block is... Uh, just an empty shell mitt that lands on this mole and then you land on it, you know, slightly to the left so it pushes right. And then behind it, you know, is a is a note block so that'll balance it up we could hit it. So yes, you could have just put the shell mitt on the mole and had it sit there, but it's nice to have some more action by using the, the thwomp. Watching that short sequence to here, this activates the buzzy that knocks off this brick that bounces down to activate this shell, which goes off of a, a note block, which you bounce on and keep going. So it's just like one thing affecting the other that goes to the next thing, you know? So I kind of like how it just becomes like a sequence of events. Um, this could have been, this little contraption right here could have been done a few different ways. Uh, I used the yellow pipe for the timing. The timing is everything. And having this drop down this vertical line here, and notice that this buzzy is centered, right? So it's going to hit the side of it. When I hit up here, it's got enough time to, to knock it over. Okay, so there's the whole sequence. After this sequence, after we land on the big buzzy, the spring comes down. If it were a red pipe, it would come down too fast. So it's important you work with the timing when you consider those. Bouncing over these three, and then there's nothing else over here other than just trying to block cheese and have people stop from jumping into that door. Um, this is the interesting part of this setup here. So this is something I used in this level, and then subsequently I've used it in other levels too, which I'll show you. But this mechanic, when I, ha when I move the saws here, the timing of this is really interesting. So by the time you come in, the yellow pipe works out just perfectly. So this Goomba just, just falls out, right? <laughs> falls down over here, hits the conveyor, bounces over here and bounces up at the right time every time. So if I remove this saw, Okay, so you saw that without the saws now. So it's, I just think that's really cool, like timing-wise, uh, having them bounce up. The yellow pipe is what makes that key. You might have to play around with that if you're gonna use that mechanic, but the yellow pipe tends to work out perfectly if you're in the space long enough. Um, so you might wanna test that out. What What is key about setting that up timing-wise is there's three min jumps here. There's no way anybody can do a control jump or max jump. It has to be three minimum jumps leading into that. And then you really need a maximum jump to get over this big muncher. So we know that every single player that gets past this obstacle is going to go min, 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 max. Uh, and then they have enough you know, leeway to land where they want to. Generally, they're going to do a max jump here. Um, and then you know, land on the Goomba somewhere in this vicinity. The arrow seems sufficient, so you might have to play around with that. Okay, and then the same for this one. You know, by the time we're in this space long enough to bounce down and up and over is enough time for this Goomba to drop down. And because it's dropping down on the end here, it's going to start walking this way. So that's how we managed for it to land over here. So it's not even that complex. Just, 
it's really cool. It, because it's not a red pipe, like a red pipe would dispense enemies quick enough that you could just literally jump there endlessly, but a yellow pipe is just slow enough that you can't do that. Now this be this opening setup is kind of interesting just because like this falling buzz spiny is going to activate as soon as you're under it. So by going up and over and down and up again allows enough time for this spiny to come down, knock down this brick and then land over here. Right? So that that activated uh, when we hit this, it fired the shell that knocked this down. So if we never ended up hitting this, you wouldn't get over that obstacle. There's no way, um, you know, to get the timing of this orange pipe. So it's subtle. Do you need the bricks? No, but it it, it changes the landscape, you know, as you're playing it and creates more things moving around. So it just adds to the complexity looking of the level. All right, so now we have another section here. If you look at without the saws. Again, we have it where you're jumping over this muncher onto here, onto this parachuting Goomba, which allows enough time for this Goomba to come out of the pipe, bounce up, and land on it. So we can look at that sequence without the saws, so we can see that. So it's, it's, it's minor, but it's subtle, but it, it works really well, like the timing wise of that yellow pipe. So that's why I kept playing with it in this. Um, and this also happens to work out pretty well too. When you put a, a flying, uh, when you put the wings on the goon brat, it's, it's like you get two hits. So instead of stacking two enemies, just use the wing. And because it's already on this like half laid muncher here against the wall, like it's got nowhere to go, but that same direction. Again, we have another yellow pipe, this time launching a Goombrat with, uh, with, with a parachute. Excuse me. Um, and that also just creates more interest and more movement in the level. This is again firing a shell and it knocks out both of those bricks. So if you don't hit this, you know, it just happens to land like, you know, right in between them. If, if these two blocks were forward or back, it would probably only knock one of the bricks down, but um, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice obstacle because you physically can't get past it unless you hit this question block and it just allows you to cram in more movement into a smaller amount of space. Okay, Paco Surf Alchemy. So some of you played this, some of you thought it was too hard, but uh, I really didn't design it to be super hard. But I want to highlight that similar mechanic of using the yellow pipe for enemies to, to appear. This whole sequence is designed to be timed just right for the yellow pipe. So again, like as soon as you're moving and we're doing max jump, I'm always banking on it being max jump design. So this is kind of a crazy contraption. I'm gonna remove the saws so you can see behind what's happening here. But the idea is, so we've seen this before in earlier videos, when you stack two Koopas, you're always going to get the red shell flying to the left because there's two of them on the same platform. Uh, so that's important when we're doing the surfs. You can't just leave one shell on there. But it's always going to throw the shell kind of diagonally up to the left that way. This was designed to be able to be thrown across here when you throw the shell the way it goes over. It knocks into this brick, right? Lands down here. At the same time, this muncher falls down on this music block, knocking this beetle down into this conveyor and spring, flying it across here, over this music block, up and over, so that it lands um, up here, ultimately. Uh, this will fall down once we've jumped from this Goomba up to this on-off and down to that shell, so that comes down and makes it possible to make it over. And by the way, this is this is firing out uh, a red Koopa that's going to land right here. So you got to see that that sequence in action, um, which is really cool. Just that one thing leads to the next, and it it helps to see the. 
the, the setup here. Now the reason these one ways are here is inevitably, you know, throwing it openly over something like this, there's a little bit of variation in the way the shell will land. Sometimes it'll go right in here, other times it'll hit down here, but we want to make sure it definitely doesn't knock out this Goomba. So I centered it uh, on this big muncher so that there's just a tiny bit of gap uh, so it won't get interfered either way. Um, and by shooting out a red Koopa, it's going to land on, you know, the single th the the single muncher here because it's raised a little bit. It's not going to go, you know, either direction. So that that's that raise was strategic. Um, and then yeah, you saw the subsequent sequence with the big shell, and then it goes into a you know a whole nother setup here. Um, shortly after. Yeah, there's a another on-off sequence here. We're landing on, we're knocking the big shell, landing here, jumping up here, and it flows all very nicely. Um, and again, this is going to drop a side spring to to drop this, <laughs> push this shell. Excuse me. And then if we take this away, here we have another sequence where it's going to bounce up and activate this. And this is a a big mole so if you noticed it pop it pops up above where the saw is so you can land on it it kind of came out of left field looking at this whole sequence of events uh now we can take off this saw you saw how that all kind of came together. Because this is standing up here, the big shell is going to knock into it and just kind of time itself so we can land on it right down here. And then by the time we activate it, it's going to drop down, hit this shell. We pick up this shell. We land on the big mole. Now the big mole is important because if it were like a, like a flying Koopa or something small, that would be super annoying to land on while you're holding a shell. I really don't like those setups. I find it not fair, frankly, as you're kind of coming from a down angle, you're very likely to knock into it. So a big a big enemy, specifically like a big mole, is probably going to be the least of your problems. You're not going to have that kind of jank or frustration. So this is very interesting. This, this whole setup, like you kind of just saw, this buzzy, this buzzy shell does a few things. One, it knocks up this mole, and then two, it lands over here, which will be our first jump, right? Now, this setup is also really cool, a variation of the pipe, the yellow pipe mechanic that I was using in the other level that you just saw, Goomba Carnival, and this one as well. You activate the on-off here, right? So when you throw the shell for the surf, this is going to open this up. Now the timer starts for when the yellow pipe is going to spit out a parachuting buzzy. Now the interesting thing is, um, let me just move this here. I want to show you something. This setup, notice that it's two spaces above and we have a cloud and I've used this and I'm going to use this in another level which you're going to see shortly. So the way this 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 times out is it kind of just pops up. So if you remove the if you remove the spring and you have an, a parachute going up, notice how it pops up and it goes a little bit to the left. That spring is 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 there to intercept that, right? So pop up, boing, and it, you know what I mean because the the buzzy is is centered. So there's a lot you can do with that, um, and it doesn't even have to be facing up, but the timing works as such as by the time you throw this surf, you've turned it off so you've opened it. Now, by the time you get down here, you're going to land on this buzzy that came from over here, that shell. By the time you jump up, this shell's already popped up and ready to replace the one you just jumped on. And then you're going to turn it off right here, which opens the wall, but is also going to stop other shells from just flying out too. Uh, and then you see here from this setup, it also drops down this mole. So there's no way you can just keep flying through um, if for some reason you decided not to hit an on-off switch or something. There's, there's no way to get by. And, and of course there's spikes on the top to stop any potential cheese there.
yeah, so it's it's a really cool sequence of events, you know, that when it when it's all said said and done. Um, this is a trickier level because it has more surfs, but you don't necessarily need surfs to be able to incorporate those kind of bounce mechanics. Um, so let's take a look at another one. Okay, so this is part of the Shell Jank Redemption, which is honestly just a crazy mind game of a build. Uh, most people can't really wrap their head around it, but I do want to highlight some common themes. I'm basically just merging a bunch of different contraptions and creating monster contraptions that lead from one to the next. Um, I really like the idea of a sequence of events. It's a pain to test because you constantly have to go back to the beginning to make sure that it works right, timing-wise. But once it's all said and done, it can be really cool when executed. Um, so I wanted to highlight a few different setups in here that are going to look familiar. Here we go with that parachuting buzzy up and over sequence. In this instance, it's going to hit this music block, this spring, and bounce over with just enough time to be able to land on. Here's another one with a, a side yellow pipe that once the red is open, it's timed to bounce over here, right? Um, and it's gonna pop up, it's gonna pop up over here. So it's gonna go sideways, up, boing, and over at that point. Um, let's look at another one. Here's another setup down here. This one uses a red pipe probably based on the timing we needed this to activate a little bit sooner but the crazy thing is this is going to pop up over it's going to hit this this is going to drop a side spring and start this sequence which is going to go over here bounce up and over to end up over here um, and this original shell is going to after it bounces over here is going to pop in here boom 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 through the bricks and land and stay over here um, it's it's totally just total craziness. The timing of this is really a lot of experimentation. I might just be insane to make something like this. Um, I would also add that in order for this to work right without using so many spikes and saws, the don't touch the ground needed to be applied to that, which for some people is a non-starter, but it does give you a lot more build freedom when you put something in like that, that you don't have to worry about the cheese stuff because you really can't touch the ground anywhere, so it is what it is. Okay, so you got to see this beginning sequence here, and the crazy thing is it's... <laughs> I think when you're when you're making something this like this and you see the end product, you're just like, what the heck is the person thinking? Like, how did they come up with this? Well, I can tell you it didn't start with this vision like from the beginning. It really just started with how do I start with one contraption and then where does that go? So I generally start throwing up shells bouncing in directions and I don't have a clear place for it to go, but I know that I've just added another shell to the equation, so I need to put it somewhere. And then if I don't have somewhere to put it, can it activate something else uh, to keep the flow going? Um, so even just this opening is kind of like, what the heck is going on? Because we're activating one, two, three, right? Re-landing on one we already activated. Um, this on-off switch will start another series of events. This one's technically a fourth because this is just going to fall as soon as I go forward. It's going to just kind of fall and lock itself down in here. Now the the upside down shells are good because uh, or buzzies as opposed to using a shell mint because it definitely can't be cheesed um, but still provides that bounce. The ghosts are also really key because shells can fall through them but obviously Mario can't and they they serve as a good placeholder. I like using the, the big ghost because the the spride spring kind of like hides in there, right? Um, and you can use stacks of them in there. So that if we look at this just like as is, okay, so one, we go to this. So one, the same shell, starting the next sequence of events, right? Okay, well, you get, you get the point. Um, but these bricks are all based on timing. So, like, when I was building this, 
Sometimes I needed something to appear sooner or later. That's where these bricks come in. So, you know, a lot of experimentation of where do the bricks get placed. Um, and if I can, I like to try and lock it in so that a sequence of events is triggered by an on-off switch, which keeps the timing consistent. Because if you don't do that, then, you know, the timing of where the shells are going to land is going to be all over the place. And the more shells you add, the more complexity it gets the more it's gonna, more likely it's going to break and not work right for you. And if it does work right for you, it might not work right for somebody else. You have to keep in mind that like everyone's gonna play this a little bit differently. So anything you can do to keep the consistency factor of the only way this will succeed is by max jumping, right? Max jumping for sure. If this were control jumps, this would be an absolute hell. Um, max and min jumps, right? And then really just controlling. So I generally don't, add like th like th adding a throw trick i mean this is smb1 so there's no throws right so it's by design that makes that easy um but throw tricks can be kind of a variation in speed and um placement generally so when you're going to have this many shells over there it's, it's generally a lot more difficult to get that lined up right unless you're throwing it into a fixed spot and it doesn't like interfere with anything else a lot of the themes are, are the same in using you know like the the pipe thing i was referring to earlier here we have like another falling buzzy sequence right so as soon as mario goes under it boom 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 triggers this which pops up another shell which goes up over the top i mean there's just like a lot <laughs> a lot going on here but really all i'm thinking about is where's one shell gonna go and can it do more things can it trigger more events Sometimes there really is no good place to put a flying buzzy and you just need to put a fixed enemy around. That's not the end of the world. In my mind, I want to keep using shells as <laughs> and activating more shells. Uh, and that's what, that's what just keeps this whole chaotic ship going. This is also an interesting little setup. In retrospect, I should have put like an icicle down here because I'm, I really want to min jump. My one regret for this level was not putting a, a glacier up here to signify that's a minimum jump. Other than that, um, you know, it's just it's just freaking crazy. So at this point you're probably thinking, this guy is crazy and there's no way I can reproduce any of this and get any of the same results. You can, it just, it's a lot of experimentation and like I said before, none of this just kind of magically came to my head and I just pieced things together. It was just like one thing after the other and leading to something else and then seeing where it goes. This level has a lot of the same shell mechanics, but I just shortened it because generally when you make something like this complexity and it's longer than 25 seconds, the clear rates go below 1% because there's so much uh, control needed to get it right and a lot of people will struggle with this. Even though it is just bouncing, you would think, oh, it's just bouncing, it's easy, but... Um, this one I kept shorter. I think the sections were only like 20 seconds and this has over 5,000 plays, you know, in a few months. So clearly that model worked. Sometimes it's easy to get carried away with this and just keep making them longer and longer, but definitely not over 30 seconds. 20 seconds probably ideal because you'll keep people in the sweet spot where they can see the end and they know they can keep going. So a lot kind of happened there, but even though it was just bouncing, um, the saws probably hide some of it, but let's, let's remove the saws here so you can see some of this. And then it all becomes a lot more clear as soon as we start taking away some of the other obstacles, right? So the first part, this, you jump on here, this drops a side spring that flings this up, right? On the same time, Right, so did you notice the timing of that? It broke this brick and then bounced back just in time for us to land on it after we've triggered this spring, right? So this does two things. One, it comes down. Okay, so it's, it's hard to see from this angle, but when you knock into something up above right here, here let me put a it's gonna knock the other thing down. So I can actually activate two if, and I've done sequences and I've showed things like this before, 
Like this setup, we just have the resting shell. Um, but in theory, you could do a lot of different things. You know, and this could go higher. Um, let's put side springs in here. Let's just test this out, right? So there's side springs in all of these. So we have all of them can get activated. All of them. So you could do, you could have those shells go in any number of directions. And I like to use things like semi-solids. Let's, let's put it like this. Uh, I might actually reverse this. Okay, so, so if you look at something like this, it looks kind of kooky, but there's, tr there's springs in these. You could probably switch it the other way around. So I could decide I'm going to put the side spring here and the shell here. And it still does the same thing. Um, so there's a lot you can do with that. I love doing stuff like that. Where do those shells go? You decide. But that kind of stuff is what makes these levels go from, you know, good to crazy, insane, awesome. And you'll get all kinds of, you know, recognition for like the insanity of what it all is. But really, I'm just adding more shells in places where they didn't think about. So you'll see some of the similar themes that we've done here. Let's look at the other section as well, since this level's done so well. And you might be thinking, where are the indicators? Well, there's arrows there, but I've been using the the clock tower stuff. So that flowed really well and was really short. Okay, so again, this is a uh, this is kind of like when we looked at the shell jank redemption. This is one more shell in here, right? And I put this time I learned my lesson and I put the, the glacier above it. So you know there are minimum jumps, which is key to go boom, 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 boom. Um, and I had to put this coin here so you knew it's actually four, four hits. The first three are minimum. This one's a maximum landing up here. Okay, so there's a lot of saws hidden in here, but let's pull back the curtain a little bit. So the first shell is gonna slide across here, hit this music block, right? Hit this on off, which is gonna turn that off, right? And then the process, it's also gonna bounce up and land up here. So that's what we're, we're gonna land on first, where this grandfather clock is. The next shell is the next two shells, well, okay, so the first one's gonna bounce up here and go up this way, right? The second shell is gonna journey over. By the time it gets over here, this will be turned off and it's gonna go on this lower level here, right? So it's gonna bounce up over and land right here. I had this one way here in case it went over. I haven't encountered it all. I don't think it's really needed, but I put it there just in case in the event for some reason it's slightly fast it's going to hit it and then bounce back and you're still going to land on it um, so it gives a little bit more flexibility to landing the reason this is down here is because once we hit this the shell is going to just gently fall down land on this conveyor hit the spring remove that it's going to bounce up here and then we're going to land on it again the same shell I, i've used this setup a lot because i really like recapturing that shell um it keeps a flying shell you know it makes it seem like things are just kind of flying at you but really a lot of times it's the same shell and then the last shell of course is the one that comes down here we bounce on and we kind of bounce on it twice we do a min jump on it here but then we also do a max jump down here away from the icicles so that's where that third one comes in but these sort of trap door mechanics um i've used it in I think the mechanical cloud level I highlighted earlier as well. They require and um, Skunk Classic 4, 
I want to say I used it in there, or a variation of that. Anyways, that's, that's in a previous video. Um, and then we've also seen, you know, let's see, so that's a thwomp activating a shell coming down. So we bounce on this. By the time we're mid-air, this thwomp has got a shell on its back, and it's going to be pushing one down. So it's going to be pushing a buzzy down here, and at the same time, it's going to fling this buzzy over... Right, and then it's gonna fly over so we land on it. So the, the fungi thing is this is gonna actually bounce off this side spring. Okay, so we saw how this kind of landed. This shell bounces off this spring, hits these side springs over here. Let's remove this. These side springs serve two purposes, which you can kind of see from now. That's quite evident from this yellow pipe. But this bounces over here, activates this spring, and when you put a when you put a music block, excuse me, in a corner like this, it's going to give you that kind of bounce up and pop up sort of motion, which is kind of different with a flying shell flying up at that angle. So you can get that angle by putting a, a shell landing in a music block in a corner like that. And then this shell is literally sole purpose is just to activate this on off switch, um, which opens up this door. Uh, and the yellow just happens to be timed right because we're not spending much time here. It's gonna fling up and over so we can land on it. Yeah, so the, the these springs kind of serve a dual purpose here. This is gonna just kind of fall down on its on its own when we get under it. Right, so okay, so now you can kind of see that that pop in motion right there. Pop up and it's gonna land right where we were on those arrows. So that's pretty cool. I mean, here we've used this same setup, this or the same sort of mini contraption of the the pipe with the buzzy and the spring, and we've repurposed it to look different in many different ways. Um, very cool, lots of possibilities you can do with that. I hope this video helps. I know there's like a lot going in these. If you really want to know more about these, you can find me on Twitch at skunkpunk68. Um, I also have a few clear videos on YouTube for other stuff. You can check out my other videos. I've covered a lot of other different topics and I have more contraptions too. But um, ideally I'd love to get uh, people making more tech levels because selfishly I like playing tech levels. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.